Okay, class, I know that the last lecture cut off uh, right as it was about to end, or the first part of this lecture. Don't worry about it. I was literally just wrapping up everything that we talked about. So if you were able to follow along with what I was saying on the anatomical, neurological, and mechanical uh, level, then you understood everything we were talking about. What the part two of this lecture is about is actually going to be about the training considerations, okay? So on the last part, we learned the whole mechanisms behind what plyometrics are and how they occur, how they happen. Now we need to talk about, okay, the application, how do we actually train when we're talking about plyometrics? So the first thing that you have to understand is that um, the as far as the intensity volume relationship, that is the same as far as strength training. The more intense the action is, the less that you're able to do. Okay, and that's the same if you look at strength training, right? If I'm gonna go and work on power or absolute strength, I have to do less volume compared to if I'm gonna do hypertrophy or muscular endurance, right? It's the same contrast that you get. It's an inverse relationship. Now, uh, when we're talking about uh, factors and ways that you can manipulate the intensity of plyometrics, that's what this table is about. Right, and this is a table that you have to know, you have to understand not only what the different uh, aspects are as far as what things you can change and manipulate, but what that actually means and how you do that. I'm gonna go through those real quickly. So the first one is points of contact. So if I wanna make any drill more intense than it was before, I'm going to switch from two legs to one. Right, so if I'm doing two leg hops in place, that will automatically be in a more intense drill. I'll be producing more ground reaction force when I switch it to one leg hops in place. That is just the nature of what unilateral or single leg stuff does. Um, and sometimes, and it's very important that you have those single leg actions in there because they do replicate what is going on. That is not to say that bilateral is not important, but as you want to make something more intense, one thing and one way that you could do is change the points of contact. Number two, you change the speed. The greater speed increases the intensity of the drill. So there are charts out there um, that describe what's called like Hedeman size principle. All Hedeman size principle says is that either you have to use the types of fibers, or you have to use, you have to do actions that recruit the intensity of the fibers, the those type two fibers, in order for you to actually adapt them. Right, so and it, what in these charts do is it basically gives the most intense actions that you can do and it puts them in like a linear order. The most intense thing that you can do plyometrically is max velocity sprinting. So max velocity sprinting literally means that you are running as the fastest speed possible. So by default, the most intense way that you can get or increase somebody's uh, plyometric intensity is by making them try to hit max velocity on sprinting. Max velocity on sprinting is one of the best ways for you to train any athlete. Almost all athletes universally, as far as team sports, have a need, somewhat of a need to train max velocity. The amounts vary depending on sport, position, but almost all of them will have some sort of need to do that. Now, if you need to change up, you can't run max velocity speed over and over and over again, otherwise you'll, you'll be uh, overtrained. So what do you do? You change the distances at which you run. The further the distance you have to run, the faster you'll be able to get, right? Or you can even do overspeed things, right? So there's uh, literally machines out there that have cables attached to little boxes and what they do is they pull somebody so they can run faster. Or you run down a slight hill. If you run down a slight hill, you're gonna be running faster than you're actually able to, so you're reaching higher speeds, which makes it more intense. Another thing that you can do is the height of a drill. Right, so all of us have probably seen some sort of box jumping drills, right? You jump on the box, you jump off the box. Now, if you change the height at which you are dropping from or jumping from, that is going to change the intensity. So if you're going from a 20 inch box on the ground to a 20 inch box, if you go from 20 to 36 inches, what's gonna happen is that's gonna get a lot more intense. So you changing the height will make it more intense because the effect of gravity is going to basically accelerate your body down to the earth faster because you're giving it more time. The, the acceleration of gravity is the same no matter where you're at, uh, no matter where you're at, what height, at least for us because we're so close to the, uh, to the surface, to the ground. But if you change, um, you change where you're gonna stand from, you're giving gravity more time to act upon your body. And the more time gravity has to act on their pod, uh, upon your body, the faster you'll end up accelerating towards the ground, which is the uh, more intense action and more force for you to overcome that. 
Um, now, lastly, body weight. So greater body weight increases the stress. External weight can be added. So what that means is that if you have somebody who's 150 pounds and somebody's 270 pounds, them stepping off of a 20 inch box and jumping over a hurdle is not the same thing for each of them, right? Because this other person has more mass they have to overcome, which means there's gonna be more stress put on their joints because they have to create more force, right? Compared to that 150 pound person who can pop right over because they don't have the same force demand. So when you're essentially programming for heavier people, you need to have the understanding of that they might need less volume just because of their weight. If you have on the other side and you want somebody to gain a little bit more and because they're, uh, they can do so much volume and you want them to try to produce a little bit more force instead of speed, you add weight. You put a weight vest on them. You have them hold weights in your hands, but you just have to be assured that the coupling time that they're acting within is still within the, t uh, the frame that would count as a plyometric. So on top of the ways that you can manipulate the drills, which is points of contact, speed, height of drill, and body weight, there is a, a wave here, a nice 